Um, wow. These are just like tons and tons of courses and things I've studied over the years. I got rid of like enough to fill this room. I just threw them out because I just couldn't get yeah, them around anymore. Yeah, I to hear it sometimes. This is all of Osho's lectures that you can get on audio, and I've studied every minute wow. of them all through wow. Osho. i got a lot more Osho than that, I'll show you in a minute. Um, I've got every audio, every video, every book, every CDR, DVD, <sighs> everything Osho ever produced that could be bought in English, I bought it all. That's fascinating. And studied it extensively. My brother and I have been studying Osho since high school. Oh, yeah, Osho's good, man. Yeah, I just found out that John Duquesne spent five years with, with Osho. Osho. Yeah, yeah. I that heard was... that before. Here's here's uh, Osho's books. Somewhere in there is all his videos. There you go. There's my handwritten notes on Osho. Wow, really? So while watching and listening, these are the notes that you've taken. Yeah. How long have you been studying Osho? Probably seven years, six or seven years. I you really delved in, and so you. I got about eight hundred pages. How many hours a day do you spend studying? I often study while I eat, and I study while I train, and I study while I travel on airplanes. So you're listening and then taking notes. Yeah, when I train, I don't. I'm not nearly as aggressive as I was for a lot of my life, just because I reached the point where I had studied so many of the real, you know, nutritious people mm -hmm. that you just start seeing everything repeated with its own spin on it. Right. In other words, yeah. each author takes Lao Tzu and chops him up into something else, or uh, you know, any of the great writers in any field, right. there's only a few key pillars of knowledge. Mm -hmm. Then they get kind of sliced and diced, and so the si the quality gets less and less, and the words get more and more. Mm. Right. right. So you get further and further away from the wisdom or the essence, and more and more into the fluff of someone trying to, you know, get a pat on the back by masquerading as, you know, whoever they might be. But... After years and years of study, you just get to the point where you can kind of like pick a book up and look at a few pictures and read a few paragraphs yeah. on any topic and know where that person's at. So you right. end up getting less and less good books you can read after a yeah. while because you realize it's the same shit over and over and over and over again. So probably by about the time I was 45, I'd reached sort of an intellectual saturation point and... Probably around the time I was 42, I had already been really feeling that quite strongly and sort of started going more and more into myself. Right. And, um, you know, found myself far more likely to do Tai Chi or something like that than to sit there and read another chapter in another book. Right. Yeah. Um, because I've got enough intellectual structure and development that it's kind of like a car. The faster you drive a car, the more horsepower it takes to get another five miles an hour out of it. Right. Right. It takes a lot. It might take 200 horsepower to go from 100 to 110, mm -hmm. but it might only take 35 horsepower to go from zero to 10. Mm -hmm. You follow me? Yeah. So once you reach to a certain level of depth of knowledge in any field, you've got to actually work harder to find the next level of that knowledge through traditional sources. You either have to go right to a master and get the right. fast track because there's a certain natural limitation on the transfer from intellectual information to practical application. Right. So you can become a coffee shop expert that can't get anything done, mm -hmm. really. So once you get to that point, then you got to go out and practice and, and do hands-on study. But then once you get to the point where you've integrated all that, um, really the only thing you can do is go deeper into yourself and identify energy flows, energy patterns, energetic connections, um, and then look for the governing systems. Mm -hmm. you know, paradoxically, you, you actually have to go in to find the governing systems. Yeah. You know, 
but people are so oriented in our culture to going out, something's mm -hmm. wrong with my shoulder, Elliot. Right. You know, would you would you fix it or what do I what do I do, right? But until you go in and identify, you know, what is the the impetus that keeps leading a person to have, say, a repeated shoulder injury, a repeated back injury, or repeatedly overtrain or undertrain or overeat or undereat. Right. You you still are really just treating symptoms. Right. So for me, once you get to that point of intellectual saturation, the next stage you have to go into is practical application because there cannot be wisdom without a synthesis of knowledge and you cannot do that without experience. The only mm -hmm. way you can synthesize knowledge is to experience it. Yeah. Otherwise it's purely theoretical and you're, you're, right. you're still lost. Talking. You're just lost. It's just... right. It's like talking about God. Right. It never gets anywhere because, <laughs> you know, if you're talking about God, you're not talking God. You're talking around God. The right. word about means around, right? So, but once you go into the practical application and you maintain the intellectual development, then you get to the point where you can say, okay, John Doe's ideas about how to centralize a disc or improve your bench press or whatever they don't actually work very well, or they only work for a certain number of people, mm -hmm. uh, you know, maybe with a certain strength profile or certain body type. Mm -hmm. But those are not things, or they may not even be safe for some people, mm -hmm. right? So you, you start finding, okay, now I can see what works in theory, what works in practice, who it works for. Then you say, okay, well, who's also figured that out? Right. And every step you go to who's also figured that out, you see, oh, you're climbing a ladder with people that actually know how to think mm. systems theory or think, you know, holistically or look how things affect each other, mm -hmm. right? So then you start reading their work. Well, what do you do? You, almost every time, if you follow that trail, you end up with somebody who was sitting in a cave somewhere who <laughs> 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 didn't drive a car and have a bank account. Mm -hmm who said, to stand up tall, bend. To bend, stand up tall. <laughs> right? oh. And his name was Confucius, right? right? Well, he just gave you everything you know about weightlifting right there. Wow, yeah, that's really it. <laughs> boils down to the simplest thing. Yeah, isn't that funny? <laughs> right. So what do we so do? What were we doing that whole time? We, and it's so funny, at such a young age, I'm, I'm 33, yeah. I almost feel like, it's, it's almost a waste to spend so much time reading and studying and yeah. not doing. And once you do, you realize that it's yeah. stand up, sit down. Yeah, lie down. <laughs> right. Yeah, well, you know, you're, it's important for you to uh, follow your love. Right. Uh, but don't follow your fear. Right? 